to this triunal arc gateway that we talked about in December. I presented it. The latest is that over the uh, a <coughs> couple of days ago, this mm, really snapped into position. Like I could feel this 13th dimensional opening, uh, the 13th dimension, which is um, the mother arc gateway. Um, and the 15th dimensional one was the father arc gateway. So now it was uh, aligning to this arc. And so when the 13D aligned, then the 15D, which is the father uh, arc, also aligned. So it's like saying because the feminine principle is magnetic, when um, that changes, then it begins to align um, the other aspects. So just like um, being, you know, being the female, since we tend to be more magnetic, uh, that's why usually the women are the ones um, bringing in all these downloads and um, are initially seem to be the ones receiving uh, a lot of uh, information because we're naturally kind of tend to be more magnetic. Um, so that was pretty that was pretty cool. So this this um, arc gateway is really taking position. It really impacts the second dimension which we access in the body through our sacral. Uh, that's the second dimension. So the second dimension is going to go through lots of changes. You might feel lower back pains, you know, as this is changing. And it's uh, because of this, um, it's adjusting how we connect uh, to our souls even. You know, we've never been able to connect to our soul in, in the way that we are going forward. So it's not just a heart connection to the soul now, it's even uh, a sacral connection to the soul is the way um, I understand it. Um, let's do a quick review of uh, dark matter, what we talked about a little bit la last month. Um, it's the is not realm. And the analogy in uh, one of the posts was that it's the kind of the in between the notes, the in between spaces, the unseen. Um, it's what enables uh, a space to exist or even a vibration to exist because a vibration even has, um, in order to distinguish it from another vibration, there has to be some mechanism or some space that holds that uh, vibration to exist. And so that's kind of the idea of what that means. Um, it enables kind of separateness, which makes one distinguish, distinguish, distinguishable from another. So not, you know, as you all understand, not separateness as in we're um, separate from God, in, in, let's say in a sense, but <coughs> our form has to have some way of being distinguished from, you know, another person, another form. So it's the dark matter realms that makes this uh, possible. So dark matter matrices have existed in the unseen realms of our reality, um, which has even maintained foundational belief systems. So this is um, really important as uh, we go forward. Uh, the subconscious and unconscious foundation of our reality has been held together even by dark matter matrices. So we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more. This is the um, 18th <laughs> dimension, representing the 18th dimension. And again, it's not, obviously not how it really looks, but um, just kind of a drawing of how I was experiencing the energy of it or the consciousness of it from what Sammy was kind of emanating. So it's very much kind of a, a Sophianic consciousness, um, <coughs> meaning, um, from the uh, from the mother, let's say from the mother of Sophia. So it's even the mother of mothers, you know, in a sense. So this uh, 18th dimension is holding this consciousness, and uh, it's a it's a very much a mother kind of consciousness. It's um, really really pristine and incredibly pure. So it's like 
this is um, since it's coming in now more directly than we've experienced it before it's kind of stimulating everything to be purified everything wanting to be purified every, everything wanting to be cleaned and cleansed to try to match this uh, consciousness so in a sense I mean the dark matter realms have always been there it's how we've been accessing it so now with these portals open we're able to access it in a much more direct way than we ever have before and um, literally that <laughs> triune arc gateway now is changing um, the way we access it it's changing our relationship with gravity um, I don't know if that gravity is even going to exist anymore because it's the pure magnetic principle really that will um, it feels like that will keep us on the, the planet if I, you know those those are, those are just some thoughts that I've been having um, this is the 17th dimension and as you can see these are like uh, depicted as phasing in and out uh, in the center of it here it represents kind of this connection with the 18th dimension and how it's um, phasing in and out and also connected to the 16th dimension so if you imagine like if you've watched Star Trek and um, you know they say beam me aboard or you know beam me over there it's kind of like that phaser effect that phasing in and out um, and it's a, like a dissipating field so it can bring things in bring things through but also then um, dissipate things so this is what I was referring to uh, Heather about um, utilizing this uh, 17th dimension to basically dissipate um, beams right through you know the dark matter field uh, that don't belong here anymore so but it's you know still playing with it still working with it I'm sure we'll be learning more about how to um, utilize these uh, quote new tools and uh, new awarenesses and new access points 16th dimension so uh, dark matter uh, matrices is what you know the is not it's like an is not matrix of what then will come where the light will come through to manifest what is what we what we see what we um, you know know in the visible kind of world and so um, those matrices uh, of what it does not is not supportive of a 5d consciousness are being nullified dissipated um, just uh, uncreated in a sense and now new dark matter matrices can be created uh, to hold to um, create what we want to be in this physical reality that is in alignment with a 5d consciousness and a 5d earth a minimum of 5d because it's really 5d and higher the multi-dimensional um, being uh, as the human as the um, uh, manifestation of the entire earth and all its creatures and all its sentience and um, from the rocks and minerals the crystals all of it uh, there is a dark matter matrix that uh, enables those things to exist so you know this is the cool part that we can literally um, create these foundational matrices now in the is not field of what we want and delete what is not in alignment with 5d consciousness so how we do that I mean um, you know I think it's it's a matter of just being um, maybe conscious of it or intending it maybe it's that simple um, I had an inter interesting experience this morning where some of you may listen to uh, or know of David Martin he's the uh, guy who has been tracking the patents since like 1999 and watching uh, some of the activity going on behind the scenes of how patents were applied for and when uh, coronaviruses were beginning to be manipulated from the patents that he was watching but anyway he um, has there's there's a, an, a, 
a law group apparently in Colorado that has agreed to take up his case because his I've been watching him really like um, I, I've been watching him like every week every time he's got a video I've been watching it listening listening to what he says because he's got some really practical um, things and ways of thinking uh, that is really great but anyway he has been on this campaign to uh, file a file a suit to take down this whole um, issue from from the heart of it that this is you know these are bioweapons these are um, has been has been planned planned there have been um, you know violations uh, to antitrust laws there have been by this this was planned as um, domestic terrorism so he has like eight counts that he wants to see filed but anyway so he's found um, a law group in Colorado that uh, agreed to that looks like they're, they're they're gonna they're gonna file something with the Supreme Court but they're gonna file it with under the um, the OSHA the Supreme Court OSHA um, litigation that they've been looking at um, but they have an interim a verdict right now um, but he they they've sub it sounds like they've submitted it or are submitting it to the Supreme Court as a a friend of the court document they call it uh, can't remember the, the Latin term for it but anyway it was interesting because I started seeing him this morning coming into my awareness and D David Martin I mean and there were a lot of negative dark entities that I could see surrounding him the surrounding the issue um, and uh, they were saying the words exonerate, exonerate, meaning like they're, they're trying to influence uh, the courts to exonerate these people, to throw this issue out. But anyway, so I used the 17D um, energy to uh, dissipate these, uh, these beings, you know, and um, then I began seeing a little while later, I began seeing the word, um, you know, home run. I can't remember the other word. That was coming up, or other phrase that was coming up, but like I was seeing David Martin, and um, it's a home run, it's a home run. So, you know, we'll see uh, how this goes, but um, interesting, you know, just giving you an example of how you can possibly use uh, these new energies from uh, the 16th, 17th, 18th dimensions. So, anyway. Um, Energetic buckyballs. Now, this is uh, interesting. Buckyballs are, um, they're like, these are carbon um, atoms. I, I think carbon 60. They can take on a, a particular kind of configuration and create these very, like, stable, almost sphere-like uh, structure. And um, what I was getting from that is that uh, these energetic buckyballs have been um, interfering with access into the dark matter matrices. So um, it made it difficult to completely clear our bodies, our systems, thought patterns, emotional patterns, miasma, which is like dead light energy. So, um, you know, I've been clearing those out as well uh, when I am aware of them. Um, using that uh, 17D dissipating field of energy. So buckyballs do exist in science as well. So I just wanted to uh, show you that um, I don't know if this is the same as what, you know, I'm seeing. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that if you look up buckyballs, it, it does exist. This is from an article that I found um, that popped up from Nature from 2015. So uh, again, it's the spheres of carbon 60 and carbon cages floating in the space between the stars that have been confirmed and interesting. Um, they saw that particular wavelengths of light were dimmed in the emissions from certain stars in a way that seemed unrelated to the stars themselves. Um, so as, as astronomers spotted more such features, they attributed them to molecules in the interstellar gas that absorb wavelengths of light on their way to Earth and called them uh, diffuse interstellar bands. Um, so it sounds like these buckyballs have been discovered uh, in um, 
in space that seems to be uh, um, dimming some of the emissions from certain stars. So, you know, again, I'm, I don't know if that's really related to what, you know, I'm seeing. Um, but, you know, I thought it was, um, thought it was interesting. Um, and again, I'm talking more from an energetic perspective and what I'm seeing. Uh, it w even did a session with somebody and there were buckyballs that were interfering with her ability to clear um, her emotional body. So that's how um, I, was, I started seeing them. For the, probably for the past month, I started um, becoming aware of these buckyballs. So now this was interesting because th this came in from Sammy about three weeks ago and I had no idea what, what this was. Um, this is, you know, it's kind of a crazy looped pattern in the background. Um, I could kind of feel this dark uh, energy kinds of stuff. It's not dark energy, not, not as in bad as, 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 um, sometimes that word can imply, but, um, there were these energy lines and, and cords that were, uh, coming in kind of entangled in a way that, um, I couldn't really draw straight on a 2D platform. So, and then in just in the last couple of days, I was as I was preparing for this meetup, um, I realized that this is um, how we're going to be building new dark matter matrices. And so the new dark matter matrices that um, we'll be creating or the, or the, the heavens will be creating um, is based on the, the tesseract, the hypercube which uh, again is in balance with um, the mind, the high heart, and our gut, literally our gut, our intuition, our feeling, our feeling state, uh, and even our instinct, the instinct of the physical human, human being. So this is, a, um, this is a, another tool that you can use to, um, to do that so and again this is all so new we just have to you know keep going and see what what uh, we can do with this new information as we go forward um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about economics and I mean I'm not an economist uh, I did just take one microeconomics course when I was in grad school, but, um, you know, that was a long time ago, and I only remember the very basics. But interestingly, in the past um, couple of months here, some of you know my son Chris, well, our oldest son, has Down syndrome, and he uses the letter board, uh, RPM, Rapid Prompting Method, to, um, to learn, and now we can use it a little bit more to communicate. But anyway, he's been interested in economics. Uh, and that came about because our youngest son, he doesn't want to be mentioned by name in these kind of forms, but our youngest son, who uh, is going to be 21 uh, next month, he has taken uh, an interest in economics, investments, the, uh, our, the economy. So Chris took a natural interest to it as well. And so we recently got this book called The Economics Book, Big Ideas Simply Explained. So... Now, as you can see, the basis of our economic systems has been based on this idea that man is a cold, rational calculator. Yet, um, as individuals, we are self-interested and we only aim to improve our personal well-being by consuming goods and services and achieving goals. We make decisions by collecting information and calculating which actions will help us achieve our aims without being too costly. Man is a cold, rational calculator. Um, but economics, even though, you know, I'm not an economist, and I'm, I think you're, I don't, I don't think anybody in the group here with us is an economist as well, but economics matters really to all of us. And just like, you know, all the talk with science lately and, you know, go read it yourself, go look at the studies, you know, we've been leaving all these things, all these issues to what we call the people who are educated that know more about these things than we do. And now, you know, a lot of us are having to take some crash courses in e even some of the sciences. You know, not that I understand all of it. Um, my husband does that for me, thank goodness. But, um, 
you know, you can kind of get the general idea of what they're talking about. And economics is something that matters to all of us because it's really a foundation. So what exactly is economics? It's the study of the way we manage our resources and more specifically the production and exchange of goods and services. So this is from that book um, that I just showed you. So who controls resources, who has access to what and how resources are distributed are really a concern for all of us because again, we have not paid attention to how resources are being used and now that we you know we're trying to understand more um, you know there's a certain group on the planet that is really controlling and has been controlling uh, all of it but we are concerned about it because it, it impacts all of us and it impacts our planet and what is happening to our planet from the pollution you know air pollution to water pollution you know, you, all of it, how energy is, is used and how what kind of energy is used so that we can get our electricity, all those things, we are all concerned with it. And so, you know, um, if, any, if, if there was an economist watching this and telling me, uh, what do I know about econom economics? I would say, listen, I'm a human being on the planet and I should be concerned about it. And I'm really concerned about the basic belief systems that has been running our world because it's in direct con contradiction and conflict with uh, this principle of universal laws, law of one, um, and that uh, the universe is infinite and abundant. So I would say so there. Anyway, uh, so as humans and re human as humans, resources and how they're controlled, distributed, and who can access what are global and personal issues. So there is the personal aspect to to this, how resources are used. So that statement that um, people are essentially selfish and only want to look out for themselves, it's true to a certain extent because in a sense, you know, we, it is important to us. It, it, how it impacts us personally does matter because it can cause disease and illness, um, our well-being. So it does matter. Um, so 3D, 3D foundations of economics, so this was another quote. The first lesson of economics is scarcity. There is never enough of anything to satisfy all those who want it. The lesson of politics is to disregard the first lesson of economics. So then polit politicians convince us that, oh, those, there's plenty, and then there's laws passed trying to redistribute wealth. But if the foundation is still on based on scarcity, then um, you know it's in it's in conflict with uh, uh, statutes and and laws that try to maintain a level of equality. But if this is the foundation, of, if the foundation is scarcity, then you know what it, it hasn't worked very well. And I think this is part of the reason why things have. Um, been so complicated and why we have so many laws and we keep writing new laws, new regulations to uh, correct an issue and yet it somehow it doesn't seem to be enough. So we have to really change the foundations. So we compete for basic necessities and even wage war for resources when really there is, there is enough. So only skilled, only um, certain skills and abilities that produce using physical resources like our physical labor, physical attributes for physical labor, those who have the physical um, stamina uh, for certain types of physical labor, or those with intellect which produce future technologies to the e economy is valued. So even in our systems then, only, s only certain people are valued for what they quote contribute to um, society, but it's been within a narrow bandwidth of what types of attributes are are valued. So people who can't compete, like if you're disabled, you know, they're seen as a burden, and they're not contributing anything to uh, society and the well-being of humanity. 
so there is there have existed dark matter matrices which has supported these foundational belief structures to exist so the reason why it's been so difficult to get out of it even when we uh, make new laws or try to uh, rationalize why we need more equality or we try to correct injustices um, it, there's an is not matrix that is holding those foundational beliefs and there have been buckyballs these energetic buckyballs that has been blocking our access to um, the dark matter realms to really delete those core foundations so again these are in direct contradiction to an abundant universe full of free energy and that there really is enough for everyone so the 5d the law of co-creative abundance okay sorry i just forgot i didn't put these in bullet um so as we the law of co-creative abundance was from if some of you remember and you, if you participated in the um the galactic sun laws we did in december 2018 where um the 12 galactic suns which corresponds to uh, the each dimension that they are the creators of our dimensionalized system um, and each one had each dimension had a law so the, the, the first dimension was a law of structure that was the basic the second dimension was the law of um, omniscient omnipresence uh, I won't go through all of them right now because the one that's most relevant is the 5d law the low law of co-creative abundance and um, they said that as we co-create, we actually create more, more abundance. In other words, we um, enable more to flourish. We create even new bandwidth of, of energy and frequencies that is in service to the cosmos. So the more we create, the more abundant everything else around us becomes everything else flourishes so you know we're we've been taught again that goes back to that scarcity model that when we create on planet earth in 3d then we're using resources we're consuming resources so that's why they call us consumers and frankly part of the agenda to depopulate um the planet if you know if you've been following some of these uh issues going on over the last two years with uh, lockdowns and things but anyway you know we've been on this belief systems that as we uh, create and make things we're utilizing resources using up resources you using up earth's resources um, so in the 5d law then each is valued for their unique gifts as they were born with because we understand that each was imprinted with these gifts by god's source and this is your soul contract. This it, it is literally in, in pr imprinted into your very physical body. It's your beingness. It is your physical body manifest by your genes, and these genes are actually uh, it's, it's more complex complex than this. But it's ac activated by the zodiac zodiac system, and when we now uh, activate our genes with Ophicus, Ophi Ophucus or Ophicus, um, back in the system, then we will experience more, um, a sense of more neutral balance within ourselves. We will be more, easy, more easily balanced and in a state of uh, discernment. So it just, it means that we just have to be it. So when we, in the 3D system, we've looked outside to tell us what we're supposed to be doing here. Who, who am I? What am I here for? What's my sole purpose? And this is saying that it's literally imprinted into your body because we're manifesting a body, a physical vessel for the soul to be in um, union and that is your soul mission. 
So you just have to learn to be it, and then you will know what to do. And self-preservation and well-being of your physical vessel is inherent in your soul mission. So that means everyone should have easy access to the things that preserves and maintains your well-being. It's not about self-interest. There's an, there's an instinctual and intuitive nature to our physical vessel that wants self-preservation, wants to protect itself. You know not to jump over off a cliff. You know not to stand in front of a bus, you know, ready to hit you. We should have enough water. We should be able to breathe clean air. We should um, be able to easily access all those things that we need to maintain our soul mission. And those are the, those are the things that we need. So it's not about um, just self-interest and being selfish. This is self-preservation and a right that every human being on the planet should have. And so if people don't want the shot, because that is part of your f self-preservation. Your body is saying, I don't feel like that's a good thing for me to take in my body. Then we should have the right to say, I don't think that's a good idea. Because no other person can tell you how that's going to impact your body. And, you know, they twisted, they have twisted things around that it's for the uh, greater good. They twist around uh, this inherent kind of foundation that they've been that the arc economics has been based on that we are we're selfish and so we have to do this for the greater good of others and so it's in conflict with our uh, self-preservation because we're willing to do it for the greater good of course when all our needs are being met easily of course then you can be generous when you're not feeling in a state if, if you're not in a state of fear and feeling like you don't know where you're going to get your next cup of water, glass of water, or, you know, food that you need, then of course, I mean, it's a natural, very natural uh, state to want to protect yourself, to have self-preservation. Um, the other aspect of um, seeing ourselves as a soul uh, that is gifted to bring certain attributes and gifts to the planet is that when we make exchanges, meaning when we, um, you know, energetic exchanges, which may be in the form of money or something else, we're exchanging, acknowledging, and appreciating um, or valuing that soul gift that's been imprinted by God's source. We know that that person has was gifted with a certain ability to be here and we're exchanging for that. So when people say in the in the, some of the spiritual community, they say, well, it's open source, it belongs to everybody, so therefore it should be free, so I can take what you created and make it mine. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's a level of um, feeling robbed by something like that because that person is not, um, there's no gratitude or appreciation for what you're bringing to the, to the table and, and to the planet. Uh, and so once we have some of these basic foundations set, then going forward, we will, we will see new, a new economic system developing and even jobs and occupations that we can't even think about or dream of right now, that there'll be new sciences that will be coming about and um, and I was working with somebody else and we were n um, noticing even that there's going to be new um, elements that are going to be discovered uh, I think in like the mid 2030s or something 2035 you know but there will also be new um, elements that will be discovered here it, it seems like in the next few years if they haven't if they're not already being already being discovered now um, that will make that will support clean energy and uh, ways to clean up our air and water because that's going to be the other um, 
well, it's already happening, an organic desire, like I was saying, that 18th dimension purity to want to cleanse and clear and, and purify. We're, we're trying to match that cosmic vibration of, you know, the God source that we all are. And so even this inner desire now to want to clean, you know, cleanse our bodies, do detox, um, and those sorts of things, it's coming from that inner desire since we are God vessels uh, and we want to match that vibration of the God source. Now, how far can we each take that? I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, like for myself, I've had visions of myself being like an old, this old Cadillac that's been brought up to mint condition. So will I be able to reverse my aging? You know, I don't know. But if it could slow it down, that would be great. And if I could, um, you know, stop having little joint pains and things, that would be great too. But again, for each of us, I don't know how far um, we can take it, but definitely it certainly seems like um, more spontaneous kinds of healings, you know, are going to be taking place. And, uh, p and I think we're already hearing about things like that. So it's a very interesting and um, exciting time that we're, we're entering. And it'll be interesting to see how things unfold this year and what else comes to the surface um, that's been hidden from us and sort of these um, uh, chaos that will also kind of probably ensue as well as a, as a, as a function of it. But, um, you know, we can also be, I'm sure there's a lot of you and a lot of other people on the planet are working to uh, make this as uh, graceful and as easy uh, as, as possible. 